Hello folks. Well, welcome to CompSci 485 Intro to Compilers. Um, I guess the first thing I should point out is that there is also a CSCI 485C this term that Elena is teaching, so you probably want to double check just to make sure you're in the right 485, but other than that we should be good. Um, actually, I guess the other thing I should get out of the way right now is I'm going to keep referring to this as 485 slash 435. Usually the compiler course is run as a 435, but just administrative things that didn't happen in time, so it's being run as a 485 this term. So you're going to hear me go back and forth between calling it one or the other. My apologies, um, you're, you're going to see that the URLs for a bunch of the web pages are also listed as a 435, so apologies in advance for any confusion I wind up creating there. However, I'm Dave Wessels, I'm teaching the course this term. Um, we're going to get used to, I guess, doing a whole slew of the uh, um, video slash Zoom side of things one more time. Hopefully this will be the last time we do this in 2021, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. What I want to do in this session is to go through and give you a bit of a feel for what the course is about and how it's going to run. Um, I did get a chance to look through the class roster, and I think I know just about everybody in there, so it looks like it's going to be a good term. Um, well, for me at least, I don't know about for you, but uh, but hopefully things work out well. So, obviously, Intro to Compilers is about compilers. So, you've got the idea that this is essentially a way of a tool for reading code written in one language and transforming it into something else, whether you're transforming it into another language or whether you're you know, turning this into an executable, turning it into machine code, whatever it might be. The idea is we're trying to read, understand, and transform existing code in some high-level language. So there's going to be a lot of theory in this and a lot of fairly detailed applied stuff. Actually, if you've already taken the Computer Science 330 course, a lot of the things that we did there, you're going to see again, but in more detail here. Um, if you're in 330 right now, then um, some of this stuff you're going to have to kind of pick up on the fly as we get into it, but I'll talk about that as we get there. And then, uh, and then portions of 330 are actually going to be much easier because you will have seen it here first, but we'll see how we go. So there's going to be a lot on the sort of theory side and the applied side for regular expressions, context-free grammars, augmented grammars, um, the role of compilers, the use of compilers, where they crop up in things. Uh, of course, the relationship between the compiler itself, the high-level language it's transforming, and the targeted architecture, right? What it's supposed to create, what it's supposed to generate, what the, uh, the transformed code is supposed to run on. So, we'll go through and look at the steps that are actually involved in compiling a program, so doing lexical analysis, syntactic analysis, semantic analysis, um, generating intermediate representations of the program that, uh, that we're transforming, optimizations, code generation, all sorts of fun and wonderful things that we'll, uh, we'll get into. We're going to wind up both looking at sort of writing a compiler by hand, so to speak, so writing your own C++ program to act as a compiler. But we're also going to look at the use of existing tools to automate the process of generating a compiler. So if I've got a grammar for a language, can I auto-generate tools to do things with it? And we'll actually wind up doing that a fair bit with uh, Lex and Yak this term as well. So there's a fair bit of both theory and applied material that we're going to get into this term. Most of what I want to talk about in the video today is just the administrative aspects of the course itself. So how things are going to run, what we'll do, um, what the assessment looks like, that kind of thing. First, I am going to get rid of the talking head down in the corner there so it stops distracting me. All right. And what have we got? So uh, contact info, I'm Dave. Uh, so it's david.wessels at viu.ca. Um, office hours, everything this term is going to be either Zoom or video, so um, you can make an appointment for a Zoom office hours with me. Uh, just fire me an email or catch me after one of the Zoom sessions that we do for the lectures or labs. Uh, the office hour times will be Mondays and Thursdays, 1.30 to 2.30. So I'm not going to just kind of hang out with Zoom on. Just fire me an email and I'll meet you there if, uh, if you've got, if you want to have an appointment. 
Uh, let's see. So the way we're going to do it is for each of the different sort of lecture times, I'll post a set of videos, uh, hopefully at least a week or so ahead of time. And I would like you to watch those videos prior to the lecture time. And then we'll have 20 to 30 minutes on Zoom at the start of each lecture session and the start of each lab session where I'll go into more detail, maybe do an example of, of things that were discussed in the videos, um, handle any questions that you've got, bring up any points that I think need clarification, uh, talk about the way things are going in the labs and other exercises. Um, so we'll, we'll put aside sort of the first 20 minutes to half an hour of each lecture or lab time slot for that. So we'll have a Zoom session. That material will be examinable, so I do expect you to attend the session if you can. Um, I do think they're valuable. I think they helped the people uh, that attended them for 265 last term. So attend them if you can. Um, I know time conflicts and time zones and things make that difficult for some folks. So if you can't be there, I will at least post the recorded sessions on VTube so you can get at them through VIU Learn and you can watch them later. Um, again, do watch them. Uh, hopefully there's useful content in each of them. And again, since I'm only going to be using the first 20 minutes, half an hour of the lecture slots for the Zoom sessions, you can book the rest of that time with me just the same way as for an office hours. Just catch me at the end of the lecture and say, hey, you know, can we stay on for an extra few minutes? I've got some questions. Or, uh, or fire me an email and say, you know, I'd like to meet you after the lecture on Thursday or whatever it might be. The uh, meeting ID and the passcode for the Zoom went out in the email I sent, I don't know, a, a week or so ago. But uh, they're also available on the announcements on the VIU Learn page for CSCI 485. And again, since there is a 485 and a 485C, just make sure that you're looking at CSCI 485 sections N01 and N02. That's us. So I think that's the contact information we need. Do I have two pages of contact? Oh, cool. I've got two contact info slides. All righty. Uh, let's see. The second one is apparently the good one. <laughs> All right. Well, that was helpful. So uh, in terms of the delivery, there is... Well, actually, I should show you the course web page first. So the official web page is cscivia slash Tilda Wessels D slash courses slash CSCI 435. So that's one of the places where it actually shows up as a 435. Uh, let's see. So 435. And again, on there, you'll find a link for the outline, the start of term letter. Uh, there's a link there for information about each Zoom session ahead of time. So for each Zoom meeting that we have, I will post a little blurb ahead of time about what I plan on talking about in that Zoom session. So you've got an idea of what's coming up when, and I'll do the same thing for the lectures and the labs. Uh, I've put together just kind of a short list that's just going to be links to all of the YouTube videos kind of in sequence, so telling you which videos to watch in which week, and I haven't posted any of them on YouTube yet, so there's nothing, no actual links here, but that's where everything is going to go for the lectures and the labs. And again, we'll talk about that. In each Zoom session, I'll tell you what I think you should have covered by now and what you should cover for the next session, that kind of idea. Uh, of course, a link to the Tech Notes page that may or may not be helpful. Uh, a link for information about the quizzes that I'll talk about shortly. A uh, link for information about the labs and the project that I'll also talk about shortly. And then links for all of the different lecture material. So what will happen here is for each of them, I'll have it broken down by week. I'll post a copy of the slides, a link to the video for, or a link for the video on YouTube, and a link for the same video on YouTube, uh, just depending on where you'd rather watch it. And then once in a while, there'll be uh, links to other web resources that might be helpful. So all of the lecture information and then a uh, blurb for the final exam many, many moons from now. But we'll worry about that in a bit. So that web page is going to be the source of most wisdom for the course. The only things that won't be there are 
the quizzes that'll be run through VIU Learn, the announcements I'll post on VIU Learn, and the links for the recorded Zoom sessions um, I'll post on on YouTube and make them accessible through VIU Learn. So those won't go on YouTube just for privacy reasons, but uh, um, yeah, so those will be the three things that crop up on or through VIU Learn. Everything else you should find through the main course page. All right, uh, let's see. So again, on that page, there's a link to the course outline that's got the official version of everything that I'm babbling about right now. So if I get something wrong in the video, uh, you know, do make sure you read through the course outline and make sure you get the right version. Uh, let's see, but hopefully I get things right here. Again, there's not going to be any face-to-face -face labs or lectures or office hours. Everything is pretty much Zoom, email, Git, that kind of thing, uh, videos. So again, that web page that I just referenced will be the source of most wisdom for the course. And again, it's a 435, not a 485. If you do actually go to, to CSCI 485 on my page, there's just a little redirect there to send you to the right place anyway. So what I'll do is for each lecture and for each lab, I'll post videos ahead of time on YouTube and on ViewTube, and I'll stick links on the web page so you can get at those. And again, I would like you to watch those before the scheduled lecture date. And in that first 20 to 30 minutes on, for each lecture and lab, I'll run a Zoom discussion session on that material. So handle any questions, give some clarifications, maybe do some more examples. Um, you know, if I've gone through and I think people need more explanation on something, I'll do it there. That information, it, those sessions are examinable. So again, do attend them. And if you can't attend them, then do at least watch the recording later. Uh, let's see, again, I think I pretty much just said this, but quizzes, the final exam, um, announcements, and the Zoom recordings will go on VIU Learn. And for the labs and the project, we will uh, distribute and submit those using Git. And that will follow pretty much our regular processes. I think most folks are pretty familiar with those. I've posted some links to videos on how to use Git and Git Submit and all that sort of thing. If it is something that you're rusty on or, or something you're new to, and feel free to, uh, to contact me and we can walk through some of the processes as well. All right, so for the course assessment, what have we got? We've got uh, the project is going to include both the labs and an actual separate project. So the labs will be essentially best five out of six labs, 6% um, each. I know it says best five out of six, but effectively you have to do the first five labs no matter what, because each lab is necessary for the labs that come after it. So, you know, if you decide, oh, well, I can get away with missing one lab and you miss lab three, well, you're going to wind up having to do lab three to do lab four anyway. So um, treat it as a way to drop your worst mark, not as a justification for trying to skip a lab entirely because that just won't work. Uh, let's see. So I'll talk about the labs and the project in more detail later on. But essentially, the labs are going to be going through using tools like Lex and Yak to carry out some of the kind of comp compilation aspects we want to uh, we want to automate. Um, so we'll be using automated tools for the lab side, and we'll be hand crafting a compiler in the project side. And so they will, and they'll be using the the same languages. So your your compilers in the labs will be working on the same source language as the compiler for the project, and you'll be aiming them at the same target language as well. So there's a lot of transfer of information back and forth, but it kind of illustrates how different the processes are for building something using one of these tools that works off of a grammar, as opposed to handcrafting a compiler for something. Uh, let's see, there'll be six quizzes, essentially, a lab every two weeks and a quiz every two weeks. The quizzes will be run through VIU Learn. Um, I'll take your best five out of the six, and they're worth 7% each. And then the final exam is worth whatever's left over the 25% that remains. The final exam will also be run through VIU Learn. Um, essentially, the way those are going to work is that the quizzes you'll have 50 minutes to do, the final exam you'll have three hours to do, 
and there'll be a 12-hour window for each that you can complete it. So you'll have, you know, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on a given day to take the quiz or to take the final exam. Well, more about that later. You do have to pass the project, so the com that you have to get 20 out of that 40 percent, and you do have to pass the final exam to pass the course. Um, hopefully that's not going to be an issue as long as you're keeping up with things. I don't think that's going to be a problem for the course. Again, it's going to be roughly a lab every two weeks and roughly a quiz every two weeks, kind of alternating a bit. The first lab will be uh, Monday the 11th. So the first Zoom session that we do for the labs will be Monday the 11th. Again, if you can watch the video for the labs before then, that will help a lot in making sense of the Zoom discussion we have that day. Uh, the first Real quiz will be January 27th. I'll have a practice quiz available on January 7th that you can take as kind of a trial run just for the fun of it. Um, since I know you're looking for fun ways to do compiler stuff. Uh, let's see, so I'll talk about more, more about those in just a bit. So what have we got in administrative stuff? The prerequisites. In an ideal world, you'd have both 320, the theory course, and 330 before you take this course, but I know that's not the way it works out for a lot of folks. Um, it's really okay to take one of them as a co-requisite. I don't recommend trying to do all three at once. That's going to be a pretty nasty load if you try and do 320, 330, and this 485 all in the same term. Um, so yeah, that, that's just my advice. I won't stop you from doing it, but, uh, but just a word of warning, that's gonna be tough. The wait lists, um, they've improved quite a bit since uh, they opened up Elena's 485. So I think the way it looks right now, you know, I can add up to five extra people beyond the kind of course limits. So I think we can get everybody that's kind of got the prerequisites and uh, and wants to get into the course, I think we can get them all in right now, assuming that there's not a, a stampede on that last day or two to get into the course from uh, from people who aren't registered yet. But we'll see. Um, in terms of doing that, when I go through to add five extra seats to the course if I need to, uh, the order that I'll do it in is people who need the course to graduate this term, I'll get in first. People who actually have both 320 and 330, I'll get in next because they've got the best chance of actually succeeding in the course. And then people who've got one or the other of them, um, I would take as the sort of next priority. And then if there's still space, if I've still got uh, some wiggle room in that five, and if you're still really determined that you want to take the course and you don't have either 320 or 330, then uh, then we can get you in as well. But that's kind of my that my reasoning behind how I'm going to handle the uh, wait lists and whatnot. So. Going on to that, we've got the no-show policy. Again, I'm supposed to no-show anybody that's not quote-unquote there on the first day of class. So I'll give you three ways of letting me know you're there for day one. Um, if you're in the Zoom session on January 7th for that first lecture, then just in chat, fire me and I'm here and make sure that I can tell from <laughs> your your uh, either your message or your name on chat who you actually are. If I... Uh, uh, get a, an I'm here from just some weird nickname, then I'm not going to have any clue who you are. So um, fire me a message in that chat session, um, or you can fire me an email that day. I would prefer it be January 7th, but you know, every once in a while you absolutely forget to go wake up on the morning of the 8th and go, ah, I forgot to tell Dave I'm in the course. So if you wake up on the morning of the 8th, fire me an email and uh, I, I won't know show anybody until uh, sometime on the 8th. So uh, that's a second option. Or that practice quiz that I mentioned. Um, I'll have the practice quiz available, I think, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on the January 7th. So you can go to VIU Learn, take that. If you submit that, then I'll take that as evidence that you're um, actually participating in the course. I'll talk more about the practice quiz in a bit. Um, so again, for the lectures, the material will be on that web page that I mentioned, the, the Tilda Wessels DE courses, CSCI 435. And again, there'll be a link for the YouTube recording of it, the VTube link for that, and then the slides for it as well, and maybe some extra material as well. I do assume that you're watching the video um, before the Zoom session for that particular lecture. And again, in each Zoom session, I'll tell you what I expect you to have looked at for the next one. Uh, let's see. 
Again, I'll post a checklist of what we're going to be talking about for each Zoom session. So that was this uh, uh, lab lecture Zoom sessions link where we'll go through and say, okay, uh, Thursday, January 7th, in the Zoom session, I'm going to babble about all of this stuff. Blah. I'm going to be talking a lot about on the uh, 7th, apparently. However, um, so you can have a view, an idea of what's going to be on there. If you can't attend the session, then do make sure you watch the recorded video later. I'll try and post it within an hour or so of the uh, the lecture session. Um, let's see, yeah, I think that's pretty much the plan for the lecture side. Um, the quizzes, I'm going to run essentially every two weeks. Um, and again, labs roughly every two weeks as well. You'll have 50 minutes and there'll be a 12 hour window to take it. So it'll be available on VIU Learn for 12 hours. Um, just make sure you start it, I guess, sometime before 6.10 on the, uh, on the date of the quiz and you should be okay. Uh, in terms of that 50 minute timeline, I haven't set it up to cut you off after 50 minutes. What it does is, you know, just because sometimes there's technical issues that, that make it impossible to finish in 50 minutes. So if anything goes wrong and you wind up going over, don't stress too badly. It tells me where you got to in the 50 minutes. So if you just simply try, oh, well, you know, it's not going to cut me off. I'm going to keep answering. Do keep in mind that I am going to look at where you got to in the 50 minutes when I'm marking it. So uh, let's see. That's the way those will run. The practice quiz will be available for that first day, January 7th, um, again, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's purely optional. Um, it's basically just a bunch of questions on what resources you've got available and what your background is relative to the course so that I can get a feel for where the class is in terms of what, uh, what I may need to go into more detail on and what are some things that I might be able to skip a little bit on because people have mostly got that. The first real quiz will be on January 27th, so we'll have lots of time to talk about that beforehand. Uh, the quizzes themselves are going to be a mix of kind of theory stuff and applied questions. We're going to be doing a lot of LISP in the first, uh, sort of first six weeks of the course, more or less. So there might be a lot of LISP programming on there, as well as theory questions about the, the languages in general. And for each of the quizzes, sometime, maybe a week or so ahead of time, I'll try and make sure I post a video that kind of summarizes what to expect on the, the upcoming quiz. For the labs, um, again, it's pretty much going to be run like the lectures. I'll post a web page with a description of what's going on for the lab. I'll post a video discussing the lab. And again, hopefully I'll have those up a couple of weeks in advance. And then we'll have a Zoom session for each lab time, uh, or at least for you know 20, 30 minutes for each lab time, to actually talk about the lab and handle questions and maybe go into more detail on certain parts of it and give you any advice or tips on it, that kind of thing. And again, I'm going to assume that you've actually watched the video and read the material prior to that Zoom session. We're going to use Git, right? The usual Git processes here for um, distributing the labs and then submitting them later. Um, I will post a couple of links for videos on, you know, if you need a review of SSH and a review of Git and that kind of thing, there'll be uh, reviews available for that. And again, feel free to yeah, email me or catch me on Zoom to talk about things if there's anything you're confused on. First lab will be Monday the 11th. And essentially labs are going to be due roughly every two weeks. We'll talk about the deadlines and that kind of thing a little later on. But Again, the, the labs, we're going to be playing a lot with uh, Lex and Yak and other fun and wonderful tools and uh, see how we go there. I will drop the lowest lab mark, but again, you need each lab for the next lab. And I'm not going to be posting sample solutions, so you do need to actually do each lab. And if you, know, if you only get a lab kind of half finished, you're still going to wind up needing to finish the rest of it to get into the next lab, or to, to effectively work on the next lab. Uh, there will also be the project. So in the labs, you're using Lex and Yak, which are actually just Flex and Bison. Um, we'll talk about those later. To develop a syntax checker and eventually a translator to translate a brand new wonderful language that I create into um, essentially a little subset of Bash. But we'll get into the details of that later. So you're using Lex and Yak 
to build what's effectively a translator from one high-level language to another. And then for the project portion, you'll be doing the same thing, but writing essentially a compiler by hand in C++. Uh, we'll get into details on the project maybe a couple of weeks, two, three, four weeks into the course. Once you've got some more background on the languages you're going to be working with, and once you've played with Lex and Yak some, so you've got an idea of uh, some of the gory details you're going to have to deal with. But we will get into talking about the, the project kind of well before the, the study breaks. So you've got a chance to work on it then if, um, if that's the way you're inclined. Um, I would recommend, really strongly recommend, getting a head start on the project and the labs wherever possible. Don't leave them to the last minute. For a lot of this stuff, compiler writing is really detailed work, really finicky work. And you're often going to find that, you know, you're banging your head against the wall for a while and you need to step away from it, come back, rethink your approach and tackle it again, you know, the next day. Don't leave it and assume you're going to be able to finish a lab um, in one session the day it's due. It's just not going to work. So I think that's pretty much an overview of um, how the course is going to run. So if you do wind up taking a look at the, uh, let me find my way back here, at the course webpage, Again, for the quiz section, you'll find I'm going to post an intro to the quizzes where we'll talk about them in more detail. For the labs and the project, oops, where are we here? The labs and the project, same sort of idea. I'm going to post a bunch of material to get you ready for it. I'll talk about that more, but I'll give an overview. I'll post a video for that that gives you an introduction to the labs in general in more detail. And similarly for the project. I'll post an overview and some videos talking about the project in a lot more detail. And again, for each individual lab, I'll do the same thing. I'll post a web page and then some videos dealing with that particular lab. And of course, we'll have the Zoom sessions to talk about it as we go along. Um, one thing that did help with 265 last term was I put together uh, essentially, you know, we've got this, this great glorious page with everything on it, but um, I put together a short list that's just purely links to the YouTube videos broken down by week. So what I'll do for each week is say, okay, here's the, the video for, or the, the video topics for this week. Did I already talk about this? I'm sorry. I recorded the uh, 3.30 intro video today as well and can't tell when I'm telling about, when I'm telling you the same things as I uh, already told you in this video or if it was in the one for 3.30 uh, half hour or so ago. However, uh, let's see, go through the material, go through the course outline. Uh, hopefully before the seventh, you have a chance to watch the first content videos for the course. So again, I'll have this video posted here, but I'll also have the two introductory videos for compilers and compilation processes. If you can watch those before our first Zoom session on the 7th, that would be ideal. Um, I know that might not happen for the, the first session for a term, so I'll talk about that in the Zoom session when we first meet. All right, I'm going to shut up now. I will leave it there and talk to you folks on January 7th. <laughs>